Hey guys, it's Friday, so this is Kathleen Booth back for another Friday video blog. Uh, this week, I wanted to talk about a change that Facebook actually made last week. So last week, if you uh, were paying attention, you may have noticed that you started seeing fewer news articles and branded content, meaning content by companies, appearing in your Facebook newsfeed. This change actually was announced by Facebook. They uh, made an update in their algorithm, which is essentially the mathematical equation that they use to determine what content shows up in your newsfeed. And they are deliberately pushing down uh, news articles and content posted by companies and brands. It's a really interesting update because what it means really for you as a marketer is that if you want your content to show up in the news feeds of your audience, you're going to have to pay for it to get there. So that's not entirely new. Facebook has moving in, been moving more and more in the uh, pay to play direction for quite some time now, but this is an even stronger signal that it's going to continue uh, doing that. And I wanted to talk a little bit about what it means for inbound marketers because if you've um, spent any time really in the world of inbound marketing, you hear a lot about you know, pay-per-click is bad and advertising is bad and inbound is all about earning attention and you should, you know, put your content out there and see who naturally is attracted by it. And all of that, well, the part about getting people to be naturally attracted to your content is it, true. That's what we all want, right? We want to put out really fantastic content and have people see it and say, oh wow, I need to check this company out. I want to talk to them. They really seem to know what they're talking about. But the reality is that Advertising isn't bad, pay-per-click isn't bad, there's a time and a place for all of it. And I think that the days of inbound marketers saying you shouldn't advertise or use pay-per-click really need to come to an end. Uh, and we need to acknowledge that there's really a role to play uh, for paid advertising, whether that be pay-per-click in Google or whether that be paid social advertising. So let's talk about Facebook just for a minute. Um, way back when I first started uh, doing Facebook marketing, the, the normal thing to do was to take out an actual advertisement. So it used to be that in the right side of Facebook there was kind of a sidebar and there were traditional ads over there, just like you'd see in Google. And they worked for a while, um, and then they started to work less and less, and I think Facebook finally recognized that they really weren't contributing to the user experience. And Facebook is all about constantly improving the user experience because that's how they have maintained their position as the number one social network. Uh, so what they did is they moved in a different direction and now are encouraging brands to do things like promoted posts, which is really just an update that you post as a company or a brand and you pay to do what is called boost it. And that just means you get it in front of a bigger audience. You guarantee that it'll show up in, in somebody's newsfeed. So promoted posts are a much better approach because they're a form of what's called native advertising. That's kind of a marketing term. Native advertising is really just advertising that doesn't feel like advertising. It kind of feels like something that's naturally there, which is why promoted posts are such a great example because, hey, if I'm Quintain Marketing and I'm just posting something about a webinar I have coming up, you might think of that as something that would naturally appear in your newsfeed, um, but the reality is it could be appearing there because I'm paying for it to appear there. So it doesn't feel quite as interruptive as a true ad would, and it also doesn't feel quite as spammy. So native advertising um, is all about that. It's about getting your content out there in a way that seems natural. Um, so promoted posts have been successful and then there are even more options on Facebook now that make it a really intriguing platform for advertising. And I was just having this conversation with a client the other day and this is really interesting. So this is a client that sells a highly technical software product to very, very niche markets. And their question was, you know, we're selling to IT buyers in a B2B space. Why would we care about Facebook? And my response was that while your IT buyer may not be on Facebook researching IT solutions, odds are, given the demographic that they fall in, which is usually 35 to 65 years old, highly educated, 
they're on Facebook for personal reasons. You know, if they're in the older demographics, they're probably on there to see pictures of their grandchildren. If they're between the ages of 35 and 50, they're probably posting pictures of their family and sharing information with friends far away. So that demographic is very strong on Facebook. Again, not for professional reasons, but they're there for personal reasons. And so while you may not think of it as a good channel because your audience isn't there to look for what you're selling, it is a good channel for staying top of mind because it's where they're spending their time. I always try to use the analogy of the grocery store when explaining this. Um, this is the reason that grocery stores put sugary cereals on the lowest um, shelves in the cereal aisle because that's where the littlest people who are most apt to want those sugary cereals are. That's where they're spending their time. They're low down, they're walking around, they're most likely to see it when they're there. That's the audience, that's where they are. So for the same reasons, because your audience might be on Facebook, even if they're not there to purchase your product, you could feed ads there that will keep your brand top of mind so that when those people are ready to buy, they're more apt to think of you. And one of the Facebook advertising features that really supports this is something called audience match. And what this is, is a capability that allows you to upload your email list to Facebook. And so think of it as um, your list of leads, people that have said yes to you once. You upload that to Facebook and then you can feed ads directly to that list. I can think of no more targeted way to advertise than that. You know that your content is going to get in front of the right audience and they're, you're only going to pay for it if they see it or click on it. So it's, it's extremely focused advertising. What you have to be careful about is the type of content that you put in front of them or that you put in those ads. So you might not want to be really salesy and spammy. You might want to keep the message a bit more subtle and fun because that's really what Facebook is all about. But don't make the mistake of promoting content that doesn't have a conversion offer in it. So a lot of brands think that they have to only post fun things on Facebook like quizzes or pictures. Um, those are all great types of content that get good reactions, but they're more sort of brand building content. If you're going to pay to advertise on Facebook, what you want to do is promote something that's actually going to get you leads for your business. So top and middle of the funnel offers like webinars, for example, which I mentioned earlier, are great examples of content that can do well on Facebook. Um, Ebooks. Also great. Checklists, any kind of really practical template. Uh, those are things that are not overly salesy. They're not software demos, for example, or consultations or assessments where if someone converts, they're thinking that they're going to get called by a salesperson. They're softer offers and a great initial way to get somebody to convert through Facebook. So really, with these changes that Facebook is announcing, I, I just really wanted to get you thinking about what that means for your strategy. I know for me, what I'm thinking is that I need to change the way I use Facebook and really maybe increase my budget for advertising for my content. I think it's the only way we're going to see results through that platform and I do think that and that most audiences are on Facebook. I would say probably the only demographic right now that I'm seeing that's not strong on Facebook is the 20 and under age range. Other than that everybody's on Facebook and they're spending a lot of time there so check it out take some time think about Facebook advertising um, maybe look at your Facebook page and see what the demographics are you never know what you're gonna find but uh, do be aware that Facebook has changed its algorithm and if you start to see interaction and engagement with your content drop and you're not investing in paid advertising that's probably why that's what I have for you today, TGIF. It is Friday, it's midsummer. I'm looking forward to going and sitting by the pool. I hope you have some great plans for the weekend and I will see you next Friday.